Hello friends and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, hi, I'm Laura. This is the Last Minute Laura channel and when you come here you can usually find me making something or doing something crafty. Today, I want to dye some yarn with avocados. So the lovely Miss Candice saved so many avocado seeds and skins for me. I have a huge dye bath that is just ready to go here. This is ready to become an amazing dye bath for hopefully some purple and pink tones. That Let me tell you a little bit more about it. So in my previous video, I pre-mordanted a skein of wool with iron mordant. That's what this is here. And this is that skein. I haven't dyed it yet. I let it dry out, but it is ready to be dyed. I'm thinking avocados give a warm, muted, sort of pinkish brown, right? Or at least that's what we're all aiming for when we use avocados. Well, I've had avocado dyed yarn that I used a, an iron after bath on and it created kind of a like pale eggplant sort of purple. So I'm gonna try for that again, but more on purpose this time. I have this properly pre-mordanted wool. I am going to create a dye bath with all of those skins and pits. And after all of that, we're gonna dye it and see what happens. Maybe we'll do a little tie dyeing also. So if you're gonna do this project with me, you'll need some avocado pits and skins. Uh, I'm obviously using like a lifetime supply, but you can use what you get in like one package from the grocery store and you'll still get a nice color. You'll also need some tools. I have tongs and wooden spoons. Those are pretty much all the tools that I use. Oh no, that's not true. We also need a strainer and cheesecloth. This is a bit aggressive. So tools like a um, pair of tongs and a wooden spoon, some cheesecloth, a strainer, a big pot, water, and avocado seeds and skins and yarn. So when you're prepping your yarn for the dye bath, you need to make sure that your yarn has no dirt, grime, oil, lanolin, anything on it. That's the scouring process. You can do that by filling a pot with water, putting your yarn in, adding some dish soap, and then putting it on the stove on a low heat for like an hour. Don't let it boil, don't let it bubble, just let it get nice and hot for an hour and then rinse it out. That's a scouring process for wool. You don't need to do much more than that. Next, you'll need to do the mordanting process. That's the process by which um, a, a metal salt like alum, aluminum sulfate, or iron, as well as some other things, you can go into that onto a whole deep dive. Mordanting preps the fiber to accept the dye from your dye bath. So we're basically going to make a really strong tea out of avocado skins and avocado pits. So we're going to be dyeing the yarn by soaking it in that tea. The mordant makes the tea color, the dye bath actually hold on to the fiber. Oh gosh, I feel like this is going off the rails a little bit. So you'll need to have yarn or fiber that is scoured and mordanted. That's where I'm starting this process. So if you want to dye some avocado yarn with me, let's do it. So first things first, I am going to take my avocado skins and pits. I honestly don't even know how many there are. This many. <laughs> and I'm going to add them to a pot. I've filled this pot about halfway with water and I'm just gonna add these guys to the pot now. So I've seen it floating around that um, the avocado pits we can get rid of some of the yellow that comes with that by soaking them before we add them to the dye bath. So I'm actually gonna cover this in water and let it soak for, I don't know, an hour maybe to see if any yellow comes off of it because then that means the red will hopefully come through a little bit better. Let's do that. Look at that one. That one's gotta have some good red in it. All right, so we'll leave these here. And now the avocado skins, they're in the water now. I'm gonna turn the heat here onto a medium high. As soon as it starts to get real hot, I'm gonna back it down to low. I just wanna heat it up fast. I guess I don't really have to. I guess I'm gonna turn it to medium. <laughs> I don't want it to boil. So I'm gonna do medium heat uh, until it comes almost up to a simmer. Then I'm gonna back it down to low and I'll bring you down back here when it's 
starting to get hot. Okay, so we are about half an hour into the um, avocados being on the stove, uh, the peels that is, and the water is like a murky brown. Um, and I think it's because there's little bits of green avocado that still sort of need to disconnect from the skin. And I don't wanna use those. I don't want that to get on my yarn. So I'm going to actually rinse out this dye bath, rinse off the avocado skins. I'll show you what I mean. So you can see all these floaty bits of avocado and you can see the dye bath is kind of a murky sort of color, murky yellow maybe. Um, so I'm going to dump this, rinse off the avocados and start this part again. Also quite interestingly, these avocados have started leaching off kind of an orange color. So I'm actually gonna stop this process now because I do want any of the red and if it's orange that means there's some red in there so we're gonna rinse this rinse the skins and then put them back together okay so here is what the dye bath is now looking like with the new water it's clear again. It's already taking on a bit of a yellow hue. Uh, and now let's add in the pits. And this is already almost hot enough for my liking. I don't think I want it to get much hotter beyond that. You can see it's steaming. So I'm gonna put the lid back on it and I'm gonna turn the heat down to low and we're gonna let it sit on there for an hour. So I will see you in one hour. Here is what it's looking like at just 15 minutes, 30 minutes, 45 minutes. Okay, here we are at one hour. It's starting to take on some good color, but I'm gonna leave it here. I'm gonna leave the heat on for another hour or two, but I'll come back and tell you when. So while we're waiting for the dye, I went outside and harvested some stuff from the garden. I started seed saving so this is my rudbeckia and also i have some bok choy that went to seed so i'm going to save these for seeds and then this grass here is lemongrass and i've got some green beans and yellow beans so fun and look at all of this oregano so this oregano, I think I'll put it in the dehydrator until there's no moisture in it. I am going to have to wash it first and let it dry because uh, this grows like right along the ground. So it's got a lot of sand in it. Um, but still, isn't that cool? It was just a plant that got away from me. And now I've got a nice big bunch of oregano. And then with the uh, lemongrass, I'm just gonna braid it all together and then let it dry out uh, hanging as a braid. But let's get this oregano going. Here we are at about two hours. It's getting a lot darker now. Still not a ton of like red. I'm seeing a lot more brown and orange, but I'm happy about it. See you in another hour. Okay, so it's evening time now. It's been probably another four hours since the last time I showed you. I'll show you what the dye bath is looking like now, but I'm gonna turn the heat off and I'm gonna leave it overnight and we'll come back to it tomorrow and we'll do the whole yarn dyeing portion tomorrow. Let me show you the yarn now. Sorry, not the yarn, the dye bath. There seems to be a lot of orange vibes going on. I think it's gonna be good. Also, it's raining. So anyway, that's all for that for today and I will see you in the morning. Okay, so it's the next morning now. About an hour ago, I turned the heat back on to low. So it's been going an hour this morning and we've got some nice color going. I think I wanna keep going though. Let's do one more hour and then we will uh, see where we're at. Okay friends, so it's about noon now, which means the dye has been on the stove on a low heat for about three hours this morning. So now I'm gonna turn the heat off on that dye bath and we are gonna strain it out and see what we've got. And then it's gonna be time to put the yarn into the dye bath and get to dyeing. So let's do it. First things first, 
Let's have a look at that. Nice steamy dye bath. Still has not been boiling, just steeping. The skins are kind of gross looking now, like that. So let's get our supplies for straining. So I've got a strainer inside a large bowl and I'm going to put a piece of double gauze inside the strainer and we're gonna pour that liquid through the double gauze through the strainer. Hopefully that'll be okay. Look what the avocados are looking like now. You can see the pits have softened and you can kind of tear them apart. They kind of are like a like a nut, like chestnuts when they're roasted. They have the same sort of texture. They're not edible like chestnuts, but they have the same kind of texture. So there's our avocados. These are safe to put into the compost. So that's what I'm doing with mine. If you have compost, and look at that color. All right, I'm going to take the dye liquid and pour it back into the pot. Perfect. And I'm gonna put the pot back on the stove I'm gonna turn that on to a low heat again. And now, oops, now I'm going to add the yarn in. This yarn has not been pre-soaked, but I'm not super worried about it. Um, it is, like I said, pre-mordanted in iron and uh, scoured already. So we're gonna see if this gets some kind of magical color to it. I'm hoping for something pretty dark, but let's do this part together. What color do you think it's gonna be at the end? Pause the video, leave a comment of your guess, and then comment on your comment at the end of the video if you were right. <laughs> Cause right now it's looking like it's gonna be orange, but I don't believe that. Hmm, my bet is going to be dark purpley gray, but I don't know. All right, we're gonna let this sit on the stove now for an hour at low heat. Not gonna let it boil, then we'll see what we're looking like. By the way, my outfit today, I just saw myself in the mirror and I feel like I'm giving a ballet teacher. Do I look like a ballet teacher to you? It's the bun, it's the dress, it's the knitted top. It was not intentional, but here I am, a ballet teacher for gnomes. Also, while we wait for that, I am going to put away the oregano we dried yesterday. It has finished drying, and now we can collect it and jar it up. out some of the tougher stems and then I'm gonna put the rest into the jar. Not much but it's a start. Now I'm gonna go outside and pick something else to put into the dehydrator. I'm thinking maybe mint. Okay, so here's what's up. It's been an hour now and the yarn is amazing. I'll show it to you in just a sec, but it's inspired me the color that it is. I want to add more yarn to the dye bath. So I got this yellow, <clears throat> I got this yellow skein that we dyed a couple of videos ago with um, calendula and maybe onion skins. I'll have to check, but I'll link that up here and uh, if you wanna check that out, you can. But anyway, this was a boring yellow or that's what I felt about it. So I think I wanna do um, some tie dye with it. So I'm gonna take the skein and I'm gonna fold it in a bunch of spots 
Actually, let's do this on the table. Just ignore the mint on the table. I'm dealing with herbs today as well. So I'm gonna take the skein and put it on the table. And then in a couple of different spots, I'm gonna take these old fabric scraps from a previous dye project, and I'm just gonna give them a good double knot like that. And I'm gonna do that in a couple of spots. And my thought is that this is going to restrict the color from getting into these areas. And that will leave us with some yellow patches that are not uh, dyed by the avocado. So I'm not being so, too like concerned with where I'm tying these, just tying them around. All right, there we go. A bunch of different spots. I tied some ties and this one I wrapped it around a few times. Oh, hi, miss. <laughs> Ta-da. Hi, miss peekaboo. Hi. This is the lovely Miss Peekaboo. Isn't she the cutest? Look at this face. Oh, hello. You are free to go, madam. <laughs> now I am all covered in hair. Anyway, these are tied. Let's put them in the dye bath and I'll show you what it's looking like. So this dye bath is looking amazing. Look at this color. This is not at all what I was expecting. It is like beautiful burnt orange. Whoa. So let's add that second skein right in. Again, I didn't soak this in advance, but um, I'm not really worried about it. So hopefully it'll be fine. But if you're doing natural dye and you're dyeing uh, wool yarn, soak it before it should be pre-soaked do as i say not as i do anyway i'm gonna put this second hank in there and we'll let it go another hour and we'll see see what we're looking like but isn't that first one beautiful anyway see you in a bit all right it's been another couple of hours i'm gonna turn the heat off now because I am going out for a couple hours, but this is what the yarn is looking like now. This is amazing. What a beautiful burnt orange. And then the second skein is not really anything exciting yet, but I'm not giving up hope on that one yet. So we're gonna leave the yarn in this pot and uh, we'll be back later. Okay, better. Okay, hi guys, it's the next day, the next day. So this is the third day of this dye video. Um, I just wanted to start today with showing you all of this food that I picked at my mom and dad's farm. My mom and dad have a farm and my mom is like an extraordinary gardener. And I just want you to see some of the beautiful stuff that she's got growing right now and that I picked. There's like these beautiful red shepherd peppers. Look at that. And Look at this huge onion and garlic. Look at this huge onion. Isn't that crazy? And we dug up some potatoes and so many jalapenos. If you have recipes for hot sauce, leave them in the description below because uh, I'm hoping to make a mild hot sauce with the jalapenos. Okay, back to the dye video. Let me show you what it's looking like now and then we'll rinse it out. Okay, so the sun is right on this yarn, so it's not as dark in the camera as it looks in real life. This is the most stunning burnt orange I've ever seen. It's like a rust color. It's so pretty. This is the closest I've ever gotten to red. I mean, it's not rinsed out yet, so it may yellow up a bit, but look at this. Isn't that nuts? Let's get that rinsed out, but also here's the other skein less saturated. So it's gonna stay in there for a little while longer. Maybe we can even add some iron to this dye bath to uh, act as a mordant for that yarn. It 
It's like the color of an Irish setter. Against that red bowl, it obviously doesn't look bright red, but it very much has a red hue to it. Isn't that beautiful? So now we're gonna hang this one out to dry. While that's sitting on the heat, I've decided I want to um, do another skein of yarn in here because I think there's more pigment to be had. So I'm going to get started scouring and mordanting another skein of wool. Maybe I'll do two. One sec. Um, all right, I've got two more skeins, Hanks. What are, what? I've got two more units of wool. These are Briggs and Little Regal Wool in washed white. And I'm going to add them to a pot. No, I'm not. I'm going to add some dish soap to a pot. And then I'm gonna fill the pot probably halfway, a little more than halfway with water. And then I'll add the yarn. Actually add the dish soap to the water, not the water to the dish soap, because we're not really aiming to make a ton of bubbles. We're just gonna try and get the greasiness off of the wool. All right, and I'm gonna add the yarn now to there. Oh my gosh, it smells like sheep. <laughs> Once the wool gets wet, it literally smells like a sheep, which is a smell that I like. Okay, so I'm about halfway, three quarters of the way full. Got my lid back on. Ugh. I'm gonna put this on the burner on a medium, medium low heat for about an hour. And then we'll rinse that out and uh, mix us up a mordant and um, we'll see how the other yarn is doing at that point. So see you then. All right, it's about an hour later now. And the yarn is, it looks the same if I'm honest, but the water is cloudy now, which is good. Hopefully it got a good chunk of that lanolin out. So first let's rinse out the yarn. Okay, so I've filled the pot with enough water that the yarn will be able to move freely about in there. And now we're going to add some of our mordant. I'm going to do alum for this because the other skein was done with iron. So I'm going to try one with alum. I'm going to get do two teaspoons of alum because I have two uh, skeins of wool. And then I'm also going to do one teaspoon of cream of tartar. Uh, I'm just going to mix that in till it dissolves. And there we go. And now we can add the yarn into there. So the alum is the mordant, the binder, and the cream of tartar helps to uh, soften the yarn because the process of mordanting kind of roughs up the yarn and the process of heating it and cooling it and wetting it and drying it, it's rough on the yarn. So the um, cream of tartar helps with that part. So now I've got this pot on a medium low heat and we're gonna leave it in there for an hour. It's not gonna do very much. It'll probably simmer a little bit. We're gonna leave that in there for another hour and let's check how this is doing. All right, so this is doing a little bit of a simmer just cause there's less liquid. That is looking really pretty now. It's starting to take some of that orange color. I think we'll leave this in here. I'll turn the heat off. And we'll leave this in here for that hour. And when we wash out this yarn and it's ready to go into the dye pot, then we'll take that yarn out and we'll rinse it out then. So now it'll just cool down while that heats up. Bada bing, bada boom. See ya in another hour. Okay. Okay, so technically it is time to wash the yarn out. It's been an hour, um, but Alex and I are going to get our boosters today and I forgot. So I just turned the heat off on the uh, mordanting pot and the heat is already off on the other pot. So they're just gonna sit. And when I come back, uh, I'll wash out the, uh, the mordanted yarn. So see you in a bit. It is hot outside. Uh, that is why I look the way that I look. Holy moly, so it's boiling hot outside now. Um, 
and look, we did the thing. So now it's time to rinse out the yarn. I've just put the yarn into the sink, the yarn that is mordanted. I saved the water from the pre-mordant. I'm just keeping it in the pot on the floor um, for the next time that I dye yarn, I'll have a mordant bath already. I don't need to get rid of that water. So I'm gonna rinse out the pre-mordanted yarn. Then I'm gonna take the naturally dyed yarn the avocado skin secondary dyed yarn. We'll take that out and rinse it. Let me show you what it looks like. Look at this color. Remember how yellow it was? Isn't that nice? So as soon as we rinse out those pre-mordanted ones, then we'll rinse out that one. Let's do it. Okay. So there's that. Now let's get the other yarn. Look at that. What amazing. Now let's put this one into the dye bath. Put this one in there. And we'll put that one in there. And I'm going to now turn the heat back on to a medium low, just so that this yarn has a chance to absorb whatever's left of that dye. Now let's rinse out the other one. Looks like we still have some of the yellow here, which is awesome, but we got this beautiful warm sort of different burnt orange than the other one. Let me just squeeze out the remainder, more or less clear. All right, and now we're gonna hang this one outside. And you can see the speckles from where we tied off the yarn. Isn't that pretty? I'm gonna go hang this one outside, see if we can't get it to dry before the day is out. And then we'll come back in a couple hours to check on the other dye bath, see if anything's happening over there. See you then. Okay, so the sun is going down. Uh, I lost track of time. The yarn's been on the stove for a couple of hours now on a low heat and um, I'll show you what it looks like. I'm sorry the lighting's not great. We're gonna have to wash it out tomorrow morning, but let me show you what it looks like now. So the liquid is much more clear now. Like it's obviously not clear, but it's much more clear. But I'm gonna turn off the heat now and we'll let it cool overnight. We'll see what we're at in the morning. See you then. Okay, so it's the next day now, day four. Uh, the first two, what? Oh, I thought those were connected. The first two skeins are, I'm gonna say 90% dry. I'm gonna let them dry the rest of the way inside. But even at 90% dry, look at that color. What the heck? Look at it like against, oh gosh, what a pretty color scheme. Oh, I'm gonna have to make something pretty with this. I'm pumped. But anyway, that's not what we have to do this morning. What we have to do this morning is wash out yesterday's yarn, which is a third exhaust dye bath of the avocado, but this yarn we pre-mordanted with alum. Um, so here's my plan. I wanna turn the heat on. I'm gonna take one of the skeins out and I'm gonna rinse it off and we're gonna call that one skein done. And the second skein that's in there, I am going to add some iron mordant to the dye bath to the yarn in there and see if we can darken the color down a bit. I've gotten like grays before, so I don't really know how with iron mordanted wool, we ended up orange. So I'm wondering if we just do one with iron after it was done with alum, maybe we'll get something darker. Anyway, that's the plan, so let's do it. That's still a really pretty color. It kind of makes me think of like alpaca the color. I don't know if alpaca is a color, but look at that. Doesn't that kind of feel... Used to be white, so I mean like that's pretty crazy. That one's gonna get rinsed out, and now here I'm gonna turn the heat on to low. I'm gonna shake up my iron mordant. Let me show you what I'm doing over here. So I've got the heat on low now, and I'm gonna add, I don't know, 
some iron mordant, probably like a third of a cup. I'm just making up the measurement for that one. We'll let that yarn heat back up with what's left of the avocado dye and the iron mordant. And once that heats up, I think we'll, we'll let it sit for, I don't know, half an hour, an hour. Not in a huge rush. As for this beauty, time for a rinse. All right, here's what it's looking like wet. Now that it's rinsed, it's kind of like a camel color. Where we did the tie dye, it's not colored, which is awesome. That is gonna be so pretty. So I'm gonna hang this outside, uh, same place that I did the other one. It's been a couple of minutes now. Let's see if this is starting to heat up and if there's any color change. Okay, no visible color change yet. Still looks the same sort of camel shade. I'm gonna leave it in there until I start to see a color change. So however long that takes to happen. So I will see you then. I think this is becoming just a vlog now. <laughs> I'm making lunch. The color hasn't changed. Okay, so I used a bunch of the vegetables from my mom and dad's farm and all the greens are from our backyard. And then it's got feta, um, I don't know, onions, and then I made a dressing. And I added jalapenos to the dressing to spice it up. So that's what we're having for lunch, and I'm still waiting for the yarn to change color, so I'll see you after lunch and we'll see if the color's any different. Okay, we just finished lunch. Now let's see what we've got going on inside here. Really? <sighs> Nothing yet. I think I'm giving up on a color change because nothing happened. It's like almost the same color as the other one. All right, well, I am going to rinse out this skein and then hang it up to dry outside with the other one. And um, I guess the next thing will be what it turned out like. So for you, one minute. For me, probably at least one more day. <laughs> okay. Okay friends, it's been a few days now and all of the yarn is dry, all of the yarn is washed and I'm so excited to show you what it looks like. So as a reminder, we started with this Briggs and Little Regal Wool in washed white. It's a creamy white, not a pure bluish white. So here's like a really pure white. It's a little bit creamy, but let me show you what we got. So. This is the one I'm so excited about. This is the avocado seeds and skins. The yarn was pre-mordanted in iron and this was cooked on low and slow for such a long time that we got this beautiful, just amazing color. I'm really excited about this color. It's like, it is like the color of an Irish setter or like, I want to say a horse, but I know horses come in lots of colors. It's like a fox. It's like an orangey brown, a burnt orange. It's not a brown though. Like I wouldn't straight up call it brown. It's definitely got more like a dark orange vibe than it does a bright brown. It's amazing though. I really love how this one turned out. Then we over dyed a skein that used to be yellow and then we over dyed it with the second dye bath after this guy came out. And this one came out really pretty where we did the tie dye, there's some sort of yellow stripey speckling. You can see when I twist it, there's like all different tones in there. And you can just see how much of the pigment went in that first dye bath. Isn't that beautiful? And they look so nice together. Okay, ready for the third and fourth one? So for these two, we pre-mordanted in um, alum and then we did an after dye bath in iron but just for one of them. This one was just the pre-mordant did an alum one and this one here is the one we did the after bath in iron. I don't know how well the camera is able to distinguish it but this one has more red tones. This one is more of a neutral brown. It looks like the color of coffee with cream. There's very little warmth to this. I mean, it's still a warm tone, but it's like, it's very, compared to this, it's, it's much cooler in tone. I hope that the camera will pick up that sort of distinction. I really hope you can see it. But these two came out really beautiful. I think that if you put them next to each other, like a striping thing, it'd be a really interesting look because 
Uh, they're so close in color, but they're not the same. Can you tell from farther away maybe? Yeah, totally. This one's got more to it than this one. Can't you see there's like a more... Anyway, let me line them up from least pigmented in my opinion. That would be the iron afterbath, pre-mordanted with alum, uh, third um, dye bath from the avocados, then the one that we just did with the alum, then the over-dyed yellow, then the seeds and pits on pre-mordanted with iron. And look at those colors. Oh, okay. So this would normally be where I wrap up the video, but I just, if you're still here, thanks. But I just want you to see what it looks like against some of the colors that we made recently. So this yellow is a marigold yellow. We used um, yellow and orange marigolds to make the dye bath for this guy. And look at how beautiful these two look together. Isn't that so pretty? Okay, and then remember the blue-green dye we made a few weeks ago with the black beans. Look at that with this. Whoa. And now are you ready for this? Whoa, look at them all together. It looks red. When it's between blue and yellow, it looks red. This looks like the primary colors. Oh God, I'm so excited to use these three. I think I might use these three together. Uh, actually, I might use all of these together. These might make a beautiful sweater. What do you think? Maybe my first knit sweater? What do you think? I'm getting into knitting now. Do you think this would be cool for a knitted sweater design? I could do some stripes or I could do like one body piece yellow, one body piece brown, one sleeve blue and one sleeve brown, light brown. That might be cool. Let me know in the comments. Let me know, let me know, let me know. Also, now we're wrapping it up. Thank you for watching, by the way. If you haven't liked the video, please click the like button. It really does help the channel and I'd really appreciate it. Um, and you're already here, so you might as well. And also, while you're here at the end of it, I just want to give a little shout out to my patrons. Thank you guys so much for supporting me on Patreon this month. You guys are going to get a recipe card coloring page for this recipe for the avocado, um, skin and pit natural dye. Um, and if you'd like to join my Patreon, check the links in the description of this video. Anyway, friends, thank you so much for hanging out with me today and for the last five days. Honestly, this has been a long project. Another reason why you should like, because this took a week. It was only supposed to take two days, <laughs> but that sometimes just happens when you follow the dopamine, you know? Anyway, that's all for today. I'll see you next week. Bye.